next, leveraging the power of music for Brand Connect. Now, this is a big one. And I've been joined by our session chair, a very dear friend as well, amazing human being, founder, director, the Ignite Enterprise, Saju Ignatius. Along with him is going to be the speakers. Please welcome Ramita Chaudhary, Chief Marketeer, Mao India, Lloyd Mathias, angel investor and business strategist, along with Manpreet Singh Kocha, founder and CEO, AM Studio Entertainment Private Limited. Mm -hmm. Along with them is Bruga Umrania, actor, creative entrepreneur, and of course, the founder and music culture, Vishwa Deepak Dixit. And over to you, my friend Saju, and wishing you a very happy World Music Day and International Yoga Day. Thank you. Thank you, Mitin. Uh, it, it's a great day. It's a musical day, as you all know. And you know, what better day than to celebrate with my dear colleagues and friends from the industry and the fraternity. Uh, thank you for organizing this, Ruhel, and the entire team at BW and Exchange for Media. And thank you to PTC for supporting this initiative. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to have my co-panelists here. Lloyd, Mr. Lloyd Mathias, an icon of Doyen. When I started and when I entered the industry, he was already in action there and so long he's been here. Uh, Vishwa, it's a pleasure to connect with you here virtually. Ramita, we haven't met before, but glad to connect here. And uh, Manpreet, my dear, good old friend from the many years of the experiential to marketing. And Mruga, is, is Mruga here yet? I can't see Mruga here. So, so let's get on with this wonderful topic which we have for today. Uh, Gentlemen and, and lady, it's all about the big bucks is what we're talking about today, right? It's about how do we back fraternity, the talent, the business of music as, as we have progressed from where it was to now. And uh, I guess no better way than to let, let, let our, our legendary uh, expert Lloyd take us through it, right? Lloyd, Lloyd, you've seen the emergence of the business. You've seen not just music, but entertainment as a whole uh, evolve in our country, right? From the many centuries and, and, and decades, right? So decades, actually. So Lloyd, if you can tell us, before we get to the specific topic, which we are talking about, how can marketers leverage the power of music? Uh, give us a little insight of how it was, how it evolved and where we are now, if we can. So we get a kind of a kickstart. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Shaju. And thanks for having us. Thanks, uh, Exchange for Media team. And great meeting old friends here. Uh, hi, Manpreet. Hi, Vishwa. Hi, Ramita. Hi. Great to see you guys. Uh, thanks for this kind word, Shaju. I think uh, it's been a very interesting journey. Uh, you know, I spent a lot of years with Pepsi and then subsequently with Motorola. But just as a sense to give you my broad O-line thoughts, I think it's very important to remember that sound or music has the power to evoke imagery, evoke imagery moods, memories, and stir emotions. Right? And we as Indians are also a very oral society. Right? A lot of us have grown up with music, right? the Vivid Bharti, the radio in our homes. So I think music is an integral part of life. Right? When a bunch of us get together, uh, music is part of it. But very often we break into a sing song. Right? And Takshari is in a sense part of our tradition. Right? So sound and music has the power to evoke misery, moods, emotions, memories. And it has a great role to play. And also, I think we have to recognize, I was you know, there for that part of the last session, that music, in a sense, is a universal language, right? A lot of us may not necessarily understand Punjabi, but it's not difficult to dance to a, you know, a peppy Punjabi song or any, any, any language for that matter, right? And therefore, in the context of brands, I would say music collaborations help brands strike a chord with fans. And not just strike a chord, but they also tend to remember a brand much longer. Uh, you know, I remember one of the things that Pepsi used to pour over a lot is not just choosing a good track for our commercials, but trying to make a particular music score as part of the brand memory, right? So it's not just a great tagline like AA, right choice, baby, or you know, whatever the lines Pepsi used over time. It was also trying to make the music distinctive and memorable, right? Because the clear belief was that helps a commercial stay longer. And I would say if we cut to the present, I think that's even more important, right? We all know that attention spans are shrinking. In the digital world, the consumer doesn't have the attention uh, to stay longer, right? If you're watching a YouTube video, you've got that five seconds to impress a consumer and then he skips your ad. And therefore, 
very often more than just a visual i think it's music that can play a key role in terms of building some connection with the fan with the potential customer building a bit of an emotional connect that can make it longer right if you all look back at our past we a lot of ads seamlessly come to mind which typically have strong jingles right the moment i say bacardi i think everyone in his mind hums that famous bacardi song on the beach and that whole imagery comes alive right and this has happened time and again even in the context of etel right the moment they play one of those etel tunes you immediately recollect a uh, titan for the last two and a half decades have actually used a lovely sign off which has now become part of it right and it transcends language and anywhere you go and you hear that jingle you know it kind of evokes memories so i think there's a lot the power of music is immense i believe that brands in general haven't leveraged it enough and i'm not i'm saying a very general statement i know there are brands that have used it well and not just in terms of commercial i also think brands can use it as a 360 degree approach right so at pepsi we did a lot of uh, you know live events right and associating with a hot upcoming star gives a very positive rub off to your brand i remember the times when you know it was it was cool for young people to listen to western music you know when we got ricky martin in town it was fantastic now we recognize that you know ricky martin predominantly sang spanish right this is 98 but yet it was startling the amount of people that actually attended this concert or even you know to a more distinctive audience we did a yani concert again late 90s so i think music can play a very very critical role to brands and marketers and to my mind to a large extent it goes untapped and there is a great trade opportunity for for marketers to do music thank you lloyd uh, i had a little slip up with the connection but but i'm i'm sure what was heard was absolutely spot on and and you've seen it you've seen it as a journey right i think i caught some play uh, where you said about how brands backed up various events as well the live concert business when i remember the early years of my experiential marketing and live events business we had beverages backing up us throughout constantly right and uh, of late unfortunately we are in a non live event space right so looking forward to it and and ramita if i can take the uh, option to come to you now with with the brand that you are uh, in in the beverage space how do you see that changing because like what lloyd mentioned and, and i kind of saw you know from the coke and pepsis and the multiple other alcohol beverages they used to back music and live music events constantly how do you see uh, your brand and and your perspective on this association to help music uh, generation on hi Hi everyone. Uh, it's true that uh, the brands. Uh, I mean, past few years. Let's not take it in the, that into consideration. Considering the fact that live events are not uh, something that one can have pandemic situation. But yes, music is used uh, very, um, you know, intrinsically by different brands to leverage depending on what stage of the brand they are in. Like in my experience in my work career, for example, if it is uh, media. Uh, the, i feel there are two three ways where brand is associated uh, mark in marketing music marketing one if it is content for example radio where uh, i was business head for uh, big fm if 80% of your product is music then there's a particular way of involving music that's how it has happened so far for positioning of your uh, station and you know what kind of genre of music you are choosing so that that identifies your uh, main business with music that's one secondly where brands are uh, made brand pillars different brand pillars for, to promote their brand so tubog when we launched tubog um, music was a very very big integral part globally and in india obviously uh, a lot of regionalization happens so the hip hop and the edm that was the platform we we uh, you know like um, we uh, partnered with sunburn which is known to be the biggest you know edm festival obviously that made gave the brand connect also regionalization bringing for different channels when it was a stronger beer brand because of course alcoholic beverages it's a restricted category so sponsoring live events or even having brand ambassadors who are from the music domain and genre and uh, associations were created in experiential way more more relevant because you, you are restricted in atl honestly speaking so that's another way where you, you we got hip hop artists international hip hop artists we tied up with uh, sunburn and uh, sponsored sunburn then we did regional music festivals because for the stronger brand to box strong you know it made sense like a mohit chauhan maybe for you know like we brought for delhi bombay and for regional artists in hyderabad bangalore or even in calcutta there were bengali artists so that's another way where if your brand pillar stands 
for music, then that's a, another way of association so that people start connecting the brand with a particular uh, element, which is music, and which is very popular. It's an universal language, right, all across the globe. Or sometimes you also use music to leverage your activations, like in uh, my last, uh, this uh, Mao brands where a lot of Spanish nights, you were talking about Ricky Martin, and remember in India, people think Spanish music is equal to Ricky Martin, which is not true for Spanish aspect. There's a difference between Mexican and uh, Spanish, but nevertheless, so when we used to have Spanish nights, because it's a Spanish beer with Kanyas Tapas, of course, a lot of Latino and the Spanish genre music and was uh, we used to use very aggressively so that there's a connect of Spanishness. So brands, what it stands for, what it wants to give as a platform or a message is what and how music gets connected to different brands, depending on what, what is the message that you're wanting to drive or associate. But yes, uh, that sponsorships, big artists, physical events, live events, that time, I think it is changing also thanks to the pandemic situation where a lot of things is virtual. So a lot of things has shifted and will be shifting more towards digital, digital music, you know, uh, virtual uh, in social media and virtual domain. So the way we think as marketers also has to change accordingly. Instead of having live concerts, how we, uh, how we take music, if music is our platform, to our audiences via the digital medium, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, streaming or whether it's TikTok, whether it's, uh, you know, like even, even YouTube has it through YouTube or even Insta, Facebook, all of them has some way when radio is going live nowadays, virtual live nowadays, you know, uh, to bring music, uh, streaming of music. So that is something one really needs to uh, figure out how to end cash and how to uh, use it for the benefit of the brand to reach out to the audiences because that physical concept of artists, big time shows and live concerts, those things actually uh, physically not possible because of the situation and more so because of the digital era, the millennials and the generation Z and you know their way of consuming, uh, consuming media and brand is more on the social media and digital platform. So we really, really need to think more on the digital music marketing platforms, how, when, where, uh, to you know, take our brands closer to to the audience uh, for the modern era, and under the current cur uh, current circumstances. For example, we are having this webinar here on music, where musicians are here to talk about it, or even live sessions can be possible. So we have to think about those things. So yes, there is a shift, change in the mindset of how we bring music to our audiences. That has to change, and which, in my mind, should be more on the digital and the social media platform going ahead. Right, thank you. In fact, yeah, we do not have a choice in the current mode, but going forward, I'm hoping there's a hybrid world and there is also a live world coming soon. And, and you know, Ramita, you cued me on to maybe take me to Vishwa in terms of this next query, Vishwa, where we are in this new world of music consumption, right? Where we were in 2019 and, uh, you know, where I say BC to now where we are in 2021 AC, BC before Corona and now in the after, hopefully the after Corona mode beyond. How do you see this new world of music consumption? Like what Ramita said, you know, how can uh, music producers or talent and cash and how do they amplify? If you could give us an insight to this world of the digital uh, ecosystem. And with music culture, I believe there's a lot of stuff happening, right? Yeah, actually, um, one of the uh, biggest focus for us at music culture is also uh, a brand connect with the musicians. Yeah. So, uh, we are working on something, uh, we are creating something, an index which, which talks about the relative brand value of musicians. Now, I see two sides to it, largely. Uh, digital space is one that is going to be predominantly playing a very big role in the expansion, the brand connect, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And within that digital space also, there are two sides that can be really focused on. One is, of course, the music part of it, the content part of it. Right. Apart from it, which is already being discussed, uh, people are talking about it. Apart from it, what I see next happening is the the brand value part of the musician himself or herself. For example, uh, we all, uh, from from a brand's perspective, uh, everybody thinks about uh, getting endorsements from a cricketer or a movie star. I think the next value chain is going to come from musicians. They have a very fantastic following uh, follower base. Uh, they have a very loyal fan base, the ones that 
that follow them there to the T. Uh, so when I see through music culture what's going to come in the future, I think this uh, this the digital space uh, followership of the musicians is something that can be of a lot of value to the branch and uh, something that needs to be uh, harnessed very, very well in the coming times. Uh, look, there's also something that uh, it needs to be improvised from the industry perspective, from a musician perspective, but I see a lot of connect happening this in this in the future, uh, in the times to come. So as music culture, we are actually working in this direction to figure out what and how and when can this happen. Vishwa, just uh, on that context, one, as a marketeer, the challenge that comes to my mind is that uh, thanks or not, no thanks to the pandemic, the shift of the, you know, the usage of media now is very personalized, right? So from the big, big way of doing concerts and having a mass way of reaching out music to the audiences, it's more customized, it's more personalized, right? Yes. With the next yes. generation. So how do the uh, the the brands, market marketers and brands via the medium, how do we make it more personalized and more customized for the consumption? Because all these TikTok, Spotify, everything is very personalized. So how yes. do we, that's a big challenge. How do we reach out to the audience where it's no more mass, no more one message. It has, the, the end user has become very, very I, me, myself, my category, you know, my choice, etc. So how do we bridge that gap will be I feel it a big challenge so that it seems seamless rather than, you know, suddenly becoming uh, the uh, bigger concert type to miniature personalized music, uh, you know, platter for the end consumer because they are more customized. You know, they want more customized content than newer generation. Correct. So I think that will be a big challenge where all of us really need to think how we, you know, reach that gap. So I think uh, what you said is very spot on, right? I mean, the, the next generation is very different from what earlier has been. They want something very specific. They want something very, uh, uh, you know, customized to their liking stage, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I would suggest on a very lighter note, subscribe to a brand value index. You will get to know a lot of details. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Second thing is, uh, uh, we are also trying to figure this out. Like you said, it is something that is going to be evolutionary we don't have a written formula for this correct but this is something that i think a lot of players need to work together and to to reach there where we want to be if the goal is clear the goal is to harness musicians brand value to a greater extent than just using the music part of it and i truly believe that there is a lot more than that can be done uh, but as you rightly said the challenges are going to be different in the current world order but i think this world order is also quite temporary and uh, if we take a 10 years horizon or a five years horizon, things will start looking a little more clearer on what we want to do. Because we can't, we can't really base our models of uh, marketing or branding based on a couple of years. We have to look at five years and 10 years horizon. And then things will start looking much clearer as to what we want to achieve. Now, there are two sides to it from where I see it. One is, of course, the, the quantitative part of it. There is also a qualitative part of it. The qualitative part of it is going to be very specific to each brand. And that's where the complexity will come further in this whole scheme of things. Anyway, but, you know, to answer, this is a long topic. I keep going on and on. But to answer Shaju's question very shortly. Uh, so I see two sides of it. One is the content part. Second is the brand value musicians themselves. I think both need to be harnessed. And both will see a huge upside in the times to come. With spe specifically digital being the... Uh, more predominant mode of uh, consumption by the younger generation. I like to look at that. Yeah, yeah. and Ravita, thanks for that cue. Yeah? I think we need to pull out a lot more from Vishwa, right? In terms of international <laughs> happen. Yeah. yeah, I'll come to you on that. We have a couple of more panelists in as well. And, you know, I'd like to welcome Ruga now in, into the session. And, and uh, Manpreet, before I come to you, if I can get a little Ruga's perspective before I get you to sum up the first round. Amrika, you come from a creator space, right? You've been in features and yes. music videos and all that. And, and we're talking about how can marketers leverage the, leverage the power of music. What do you look forward from brands or marketers when you're creating content? I mean, we have a couple of doyans here. We have brands here. What would you want from a brand to help you kind of upscale your product? See, uh, the technical thing of any song is the audio. 
the audio part need to be very strong in any song even more than the video the audio is very important and we can just add you know some brand names to it and make it a commercial song as well like it could be used as a marketing tool for the relevant relevant brand which has been the case in the past also and there have been a huge number of hits meet like you know uh, the lamborghini song or munni badnam hui or the fevicol uh, fevicol wala song so there have been like uh, so many num- uh, number of hits back in the day since decades now i can say starting from king fisher jingle jingle again is another thing but coming back to the songs uh, we can just add some brand names to the lyrics and make it more meaningful all, all, all right so so what you mentioned and i pick up those tracks right those are the classic yeah. hollywood hits which i which i we all seen and heard of right yeah uh, manpreet is it really bollywood and you know i was uh, listening to the opening keynote session from mr blaze fernandez earlier today uh, talking about how the indian cinema industry or, or let's say the hindi cinema as well has been driven by a lot of success of film songs right and and what jinvik was just mentioning and now from an independent creation like you you are leading the anm studio setup which is a lot of independent talent and music being developed if you could take us to what was your envisage or your vision from a marketing background brand marketing to actually you now being content creator where did this journey begin and what do you see as a future for us as a business combining ma- uh, brand marketing and content together okay so you kind of uh, asking me to make it more tougher and you know rounding up to what lloyd started with and romi taking it up further and what vishwa added value and what ruga is lady looking out for uh you're the all like, out sir <laughs> so the roster has started so what lloyd really mentioned was the days in 1990s when uh, he was in pepsi and i was in coke uh that is the time when we actually saw independent music at the maximum and chaju if you remember you were in vistra you got michael jackson in uh it was pepsi's uh, sponsored that time pepsi was more concentrating on the english genre and the you know the western genre of uh, artists while india in india coca cola was looking at more of the local artists so if we all would remember shan uh, shankar mahadevan uh, sukhbir anaida namika they all started with independent music and which was on the maximum forte and focus at that particular time and both the uh, beverages company were actually promoting them and were integrating them in their uh, commercials in their uh, live event space that particular time is also what is been continuing but yes bollywood somewhere you know took the front seat on it and kind of came in and dominated the music and took over the songs which were popular independent songs also so like for example if you see uh, rabi shergil came up with bulla ki jana mein kaun and taken in by uh, one movie then you see honey singh songs getting sold in then you see coke studio songs sold in uh, to many bollywood uh, movies so it's not that it's not been there now when we talk about the emerging artists the space that where anm studio is in and where anm studio is primarily focusing in is independent music as well bollywood music as well also live events which actually gets them the money not just to the emerging artists but to all the artists of all stages completely uh, yes we are giving uh, a lot of focus towards you know encouraging them mentoring them to come up with their own lyrics come up with their own compositions come up with their own songs and because of the market of music labels growing more like we've seen in the past one year itself vishal bhardwaj has come up with mb music then the same mithal has come up with his own music label uh, there are many many more music labels are right now on the charts to be launched any time which gives more opportunities you know to a lot of these youngsters a lot of these emerging artists to get their songs 
getting promoted, getting made well, getting made and marketed uh, very well. So that's an area where we, where we would say about 50 to 60 percent is our focus there. But uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, you need uh, two or three current uh, Bollywood successes to make you popular and for you to uh, get more live events uh, for brands. So that's where that's where the integration and the hybrid model also needs to work, where there is a mix of a few Bollywood, but a few independent songs like the way uh, all these today who are celebrities who started early as emerging artists in early 90s and late 80s with uh, Alisha Shanoi making Made in India, you know, that's the wave that we need to uh, promote right now. And that's exactly where Endeavor of NM Studio at least is going on. And um, I would really, I would really uh, thank Lloyd to have covered the part which was about uh, the jingles and the brand ads uh, that he mentioned and the current one, which is uh, there to highlight in the digital space today, is HCL concerts. If we have to learn from HCL concerts, they're not just promoting singers, promoting all kinds of musicians. Even a single single musician concert is happening on the HCL format. And that's exactly what we did with eight digital music uh, festivals across in 2020. In fact, right now, my Facebook is loaded with World Music Carnival, which, which was celebrated in these 20 days. It was becoming the biggest ever music, uh, digital music festival ever done in the world. Uh, Lloyd, if I may take your permission as a senior, always uh, like I do, I, I did check it out with uh, my ex colleagues in Coca Cola and uh, got to know that there's been no listing of a 25-day non-stop digital uh, concert ever done, which we uh, successfully completed over 25 days last year, which was called the World Music Carnival, celebrating the World Music Day. Hence, we couldn't get the award, otherwise in, in we fact, almost we, created- at point, if I may come in, why are you not doing it this year? Is it because of no brand backing it up or is it because of the environment? Sorry, I just came in straight to what is topical. Only the unfortunate amount of uh, losses of lives which have happened across the environment and uh, too much heavy levels of depression and uh, losses of uh, monetary losses of uh, musicians and singers. Uh, the mood is not that upbeat to heal the world. Rather, you know, we would we are hungry and we are eager right now that the market opens them for monetary backup to these singers. You know, so that's that's what is not just holding us back. That is what uh, is keeping us comforting them not to push them to sing or you know bring entertainment right now. I think we need to cool down a little bit while this COVID phase two or wave two passes completely. Sure, sure. No, no, I agree on that. And, you know, I would also say that we all know music heals our soul and music will heal the world literally. Maybe it's time to get a modern day anthem of heal the world. And I'm yeah. hoping, you know, the talent from a country could come up with that. Uh, Lloyd, coming back to you, and, and, you know, then I'll open up for all panelists as well, is that, and this is something which is playing on my mind since yesterday. Uh, are there mistakes which certain brands are doing while marketing music or while marketing musical talent? I mean, are there any learnings which are there for both from a brand marketing perspective or talent that we have missed out on or missing out on. Because I do know a lot of brands have been backing up both content and talent, but are there any learnings which you can pick up as we go forward? Thank you, Shaji. I think fair question. Just want to make one little point and I think uh, Manpreet said it very well. I think it's very important for brands not to be tone deaf. And therefore I respect what he said that, you know, given the scale of devastation that phase two has caused, you know, doing something like, uh, you know, you know, a kind of uh, you know, a fun concert may have seen a little, seemed out of place in that April, May period. But now with life slowly picking up and you know, the show must go on, as we say, I think it's good. But I think it's important and I respect what you say that brands have to be very uh, concerned about what's happening and not sound totally deaf. So I think point taken, but going forward, we certainly need to pick things up. Uh, 
Shaju, coming to the point on mistakes, I wouldn't really call them mistakes, but I think what brands often do incorrectly, if I may add, uh, and I had the benefit of, you know, with my, you know, experience, let's say, Motorola, and even to an extent, HP did a couple of things with YouTube. I think it's important for a brand to take a slightly longer term position, right? Yes. Today, music is democratized, right? So you don't need to work with one artist or one property. You can work with a wide swathe of artists, right? In the past, you're restricted. Let's say you tie up with Sony Music and then you have a repertoire of you know, a limited number of artists. Today, brands can pretty much pick and choose their artists and the way they want to go. Is it really about song associations? Is it about artist associations? Is it about doing a multi-series concert? They can. I think brands should take, once they take an association, look at it in a 360 degree manner, which means if you are promoting a genre of music that you want to associate with, then try and do it through the line, right? Use it, whether it's about the line advertising, use it in your various communication tools, use it if you're doing an on-ground promotion, uh, leverage it through the line so people start associating that genre of music or that particular thing with, with your brand. Right? And if I may just use an example of a brand that I think has used music very well is Bacardi. Right? The Bacardi jingle is very resonant of what the brand stands for. Right? It's young people, it's a carefree, outdoor, beachfront kind of atmosphere. It, it kind of holds the whole thing together. So I think it's important to kind of have a deeper association for a brand, use it in a 360 degree manner so it becomes more than just a one-off. Never do tactical things. Tactical things will only give you so much results. Whereas the moment you have a longer term association, then you begin to get associated with the property on a long duration of time and that gives you value. You know, Coke was a competitor, but I really think Coke Studio was a benchmark in how to use music, right? Identifying great talent, uh, running an extremely popular television show, uh, using some of these artists on a more ongoing basis and having effective community participation, right? Getting your audience into saying, hey, I'm going to privy to you world-class music, which is kind of almost crowdsourced. So I think that's the element. Take a deep association, make sure that you use it in a 360 degree manner and have a slightly longer term commitment, right? A one month or a short term tactical thing never works to your advantage. It's the moment you have a longer term and a deeper association that you begin to get real value as a brand. Hmm. Very true. Hi, I, uh, this is Anisha from Warner Music. And I completely agree with you, sir. Uh, having a short term and just to make the product big, having the music in the, uh, you know, the advertisement campaign or associate with the music is going to give you a benefit, but for a short term period. But when you are having an association for a wider perspective where there are music is a credential or you can say an associate uh, is a very crucial part of the, any brand or any product, no matter, not even the brand, but if you, there is a music which is crucial towards it, for a longer perspective, it's definitely going to add a lot of value because as a layperson or as an audience, you associate with that product, like correctly give an example of Bacardi. So when we know that there is a Bacardi uh, promoting anything, any product or anything, you clearly remember that there is going to be a music around it. So yes, having a longer association with the wider, uh, 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 the wider, a list of singers and the artists and also the association with the different genres. It's not necessarily you have to stick to the genre. I think since we have seen there are a lot of trends which keep on changing, though the, it is very necessary to be updated with the trends which are happening, Anisha, but it should also... Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Anisha. Sorry. Thank you for actually coming in. You need to give me about five, ten minutes more before I could open up from the panel discussion. You almost sounded like a voice of God, you know? So I was wondering who's speaking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, no thank worries. You, thank you for the endorsement and you know, your interactive uh, participation in this, but give us about 10 minutes to come back to an open session. If I, if I could just let our panelists speak a little more and then happy to hear your thoughts as well, Nisha, if that's okay. Uh, uh, it's, yeah, I had sure. a few points uh, about, when you mentioned about learning, yeah, I think historically the learning has been, in my humble opinion, whatever I've seen in the past 20 years, that music has been used by brands, I won't say abusive way, but everywhere. Like okay. Just because music was trending, there are lots of brands who have just used music, you know, like as a platform, uh, which sometimes, a lot of times it has not worked. Like, unlike a Bacardi, which has become iconic, or, you know, other brands who have made it iconic. So understanding 
why and where to mu use music as a platform is very important, specifically in today's context, because uh, just because music is popular doesn't mean one can use it music. You know, where's the connect with the brand? Why does it, which target audience does it stand for? Whether there is a relevance or not, that's one. And secondly, again, I, that point is stuck in my mind, Vishwa, as you are saying, like, yes, the couple of years experience should not uh, dictate long-term strategy. No, it should not. 10 years, 15 years from now. But something, I think the current situation is not anywhere to go in the near future. Nobody has hand seen pandemics before. It's a biological, I don't know, I'm just taking a very unpolitical term as biological warfare. If it is, maybe it has a long-term impact, number one. Secondly, gener millennials and Generation X, and I don't know which generation is coming up, that is going to be with more number of years. And the biggest problem that will happen for any marketer or uh, company is that their attention span is very less. Like web series have come up, short films have come up, 20 second reels are becoming very popular. So that is a very big challenge when you take up music as a platform. How do we customize? How do we you know, personalize it? How do we, uh, as Sir said, you know, how do we make a 360 degree effort? It cannot be a standalone platform anymore. Under the umbrella, there has to be mini strategies also, how we are fitting it, because the way it will be consumed and the time in which it will be consumed and the span, attention span is so small, it will become very, very important for all of us to think on those lines before we can, you know, present a music as a platform for any brand. Otherwise, I don't think there will be any impact, you know, like even TikToks, it's, it's so small and uh, kids are always with headphones nowadays but they're switching channels like every two seconds. And sometimes they're listening music in fast forward mode. I have two nieces, I've heard them and how do you even understand that, you know? But this is the generation of the future. So we really have to think how we uh, keep all these, the vehicles of reaching them, uh, the platform and the mindset and the psychology, uh, all has to be kept in mind when we, we marketers and, you know, uh, people like you guys who are delivering that music platform, how do we deliver it to this new era? altogether and which to my mind is a long term so yes this is not the time to tom tom about music because yeah um, this is not the right time but music can be used as a cause based marketing tool as well as very rightly said it's a healing healing uh, tool for everyone but we also have the time right now to think on those lines you know if we are not active in the market that way we can still have the time to think which vehicle how where we are going to customize i think that will be very important otherwise the old strategies may not work for the future music uh, fitment, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, as like my daughter tells, you know, the Gen Z as they are, right? They are queued on from the time they are up until the time they have gone to bed, the phones on and the ears are listening to music. Uh, Ramita, that leads me to another pertinent question. Like you said, keep an eye on the future, but we also got a present consumer base, right? From a good old 70, 80 year olds listening to the classics to what I would call the Gen X, Gen Y, where we were born in, I mean, I see pick for myself and maybe Manpreet, <laughs> and going forward, the Gen Z, the, the, the teens. So as a brand custodian, and, and you know, I might even want to have, uh, so Lloyd if, Lloyd, if you can step in as well as Vishwa from a marketing and a brand custodianship, what should a brand look at in terms of parking as a, a budget or, or a marketing spend towards music? Do you, or do you do that? You know, when you do a mar marketing mix, do you want to keep aside a certain spend or a pie towards music as a future uh, strategy? Ramita, we could begin with you and we could go to... Maybe I don't think it works that way. Uh, it always happens, again, as I'm saying, why music? Like, for example, if it is a brand like Bacardi or a Tupac where music is the brand platform, of course, a lot, um, significant amount will be kept aside to promote that because that is your brand platform. If you're using music to promote, activate your brands or, you know, use experiential in different medium as a support, then it's a different strategy. If you want to involve your cu customers or consumers, then it's a different strategy. So I don't think it's about how much money, because at the end of the day, it's a platform, it's a tool. Like, you know, and how you reach out will depend how much budget you've allocated. For example, if you have sponsorship budget, if you have digital budget, if you have ATL budget, the budget allocation usually happens according to that, that depending on what, you know, uh, results you are uh, taking out of that, which impacts your uh, marketing PNL. So it is a subset of that. So you cannot just say how much budget. I, I don't think that's a relevant way of allocating budget. 
it is how important music is and how you're reaching out which tools are you using if you're using digital platform it might be much more cost effective and more measurable if you're going through you know you're doing a complete series of music on a national television or a television platform it will be very very cost costly so it depends on which tools you're using and that again will depend on what is your objective you know at the end of the day uh, which target audience how much you want to and what are the results so i don't think there's a particular answer to that question that x percentage of marketing budget can be allocated for music it is completely it's a function of lot of factors you know how you using it where you using it and ultimately what's the objective and how it is impacting your marketing objectives or your brand objectives or even how it's impacting the results at the end of the day i would agree i was hoping you would say you know a couple of billion dollars have been kept aside by a brand so you would all just Depends. pass why <laughs> not if it's a very big organization and music is the key pillar of course marketing budget a significant amount as i am saying will go on the music only and if it is uh, a new brand new launch where you know it's not the marketing budget is not much then it will be lesser but at the end of the day it's it's not like atl btl and digital where you know that you know previously for example 10 years back or 12 15 years back the above the line and uh, radio television spends used to be very high and experiential digital used to be very small now it is kind of not say reverse but you know uh, it is becoming more and more pie it's sharing more and more pie of spends as experiential marketing but those are tools music is a platform like some some brands use gastronomy some brands use music some brand use sports so it is there everywhere in the marketing budget in different forms you know so it is not uh, you cannot measure that how much on music you can measure that of course from your accounts you can measure how much it has happened but it will also depend how many multi platforms you have if it is only music then 100% of your budget will go into music only in different ways and if you have multiple platforms then it's a percentage how much you're pumping in music how much you're pumping in sports and bigger organizations do have multiple platforms you know sometimes sports music or uh, even beverages or gastronomy it could be different things so right. hopefully it's millions of dollars i hope yeah, so too we are hoping for that yeah we <laughs> fingers crossed in fact when you mention sports and something again which was playing on my mind i've been consuming uh, euro 2020 you know which which i think globally is now uh, been consumed by a, a lot of viewers and strangely i didn't find a anthem this time i mean normally world cup or so uh, vishwa can a brand actually lead it on or does a creator come on and kind of like a content creator how does it work and, and i'm bringing that question back to you as well what i asked earlier with ramita as well should a brand focus itself on let me pop something into music or it just wait for like it's a reactive mode how does that how what is your thought on it look uh, first of all i I love to hear Ramita because the more she says, the more I get the content to work on. So that that's really amazing. Second thing is, uh, uh, as as I think a lot of our discussion has been around whether music fits into the scheme of things of brands. My thought process is, music should be used by brands, and brands should understand how to use music. to their advantage music and musicians now these are two two different 180 degree opposite ways of looking at things in my view one is the way of looking where you see that okay my brand strategy is this whether music fits in second is music is an is a medium which is very very effective how can i frame my brand strategy around it so you know now each brand to its own and they have their own way of thinking and that's that's perfectly all right my point is has always been that music should be used by a brand and that comes to something that you said a certain amount of budget should be allocated to help that that strategy also grow now what ramita said earlier was also very important that we are in very uncertain times wherein we don't even know what's going to happen in the next 2 years so everything has got to be planned in two two uh, two manners one is immediate short term and one is prospective long term and both have to go hand in hand there is no second thoughts about it so the good part is that uh there is a discussion around music and musicians and the platforms being used by brands to promote their products platforms is very important for example we have seen some platforms like a sterling reserve music project it is giving wonderful results 
now if more platforms like this come like bacardi uses uh, its own platform but again we say that bacardi uses music and they want to position themselves around it why did they do that because they found success can other brands find success there yes do other brands other brands want to go there maybe maybe not but is there a potential there 100% so the whole discussion to me should steer around how brands should start using music and musicians the other way around is something that brands want to discuss whether music fits into their brand strategy and that's that's the way that's the nature of this conflict and this conflict has to come to a certain agreement i won't say conflict conflict but you know what i mean so yeah. there has to be there is a gap which has to be understood and which has to be worked around now you raised an interesting point that there was no anthem in this year's uh, the euro euro 2020 euro 2020 right and it might be i'm not sure i've not heard or there's been no amplification so if it is there at least not heard about it uh, look i am possibly one of the odd ones out i don't follow football yeah <laughs> so don't get me wrong i am not a football follower but if it is the case and and the way the question was also around the around the fact that whether anthems uh, are being made by musicians push, pushing it with the brands or brands coming into uh, it's the other way around it has been, in my opinion of what i have seen and heard it's the other way around so far that brands want those anthems to be created to to increase the reach to increase a connect and to increase increase a bit of uh, association with the uh, with the whole like you said a tune given to a certain brand gives a more connect uh, with with the product so that has been the case and how it's going to go ahead i think it's going to go ahead in the similar manner the, the demand has to be there for product to be generated there is no demand you can't keep pushing product over after a period of time so it's it's basic for me it's a basic commercial relationship demand and supply demand is going to be there supply is going to be there the whole point is how much now we are also in a content domain we are not into a physical product selling domain where where we can quantify everything and every and anything in terms of real numbers what we can 100% quantify is the reach that we get through the uh, for the brand in itself it could be through various mediums now that reach the brand gets is a product of a lot of marketing and strategic activities that they do when music becomes a part of it how much music has a pie in that particular reach that is a very debatable topic we will possibly find it very difficult to come to a certain number but we can estimate a certain you know we can estimate that this is going to be a particular impact uh but to answer your question i think it has to be a demand and supply largely wherein demand should uh, you know create products rather than a push model push model doesn't work after a while but demand will also come and brands realize that music has the power to increase their reach their product sales their their uh, oh, brand presence etc etc so i mean that in nutshell is what something i i think i would like to say it, it's the classic uh, cash 20 right the, the demand supply and and there's always a need for music right we all need music in our lives and and especially in times like this where we are at our absolute low we need something to hold on to whether it's spiritual music whether it's whether it's uh, you know melodic music something which pumps us up to kind of get up and move the next day uh, i guess we have 5 or 10 minutes before we kind of wrap this up mithin if i can just get 5 minutes thank you mithin so i'll do a i'll do a question to manpreet and then maybe if somebody from the uh, audience can want to ask something anisha i'll give that cue to you manpreet if you can just very quickly give me a or give us all an insight that indian consumption versus your global consumption you know how has the brand spend been because i think you've done a uh, many virtual uh, interaction over the last 2 3 years where you got a lot of international uh, queue in and 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 audience in right do we have any insight into from a global perspective how have indian brands spent versus the global spend do we have any thoughts on that uh i'll i'll give a little example of my own being at the marketer table while i was in uh, kodak mahindra bank as a marketing head we created properties around regional music like romi said earlier that you need to give regional music as well uh brands um and i would again go back to the example of coca cola where we used to have uh, 
three teams called the consumer activation department which we used to have music cricket and movies now music used to always be the intake for both international as well as national uh, artists regional music is very critical you would get every genre every uh, language of singers and musicians being uh, consumed and, and um, be used to entertain and for brands to avail that kind of consumer activation uh, with them while we say that music doesn't have any language we need a particular language to get into a particular market at every time every time a brand gets launched whichever category uh, it would be automobile telecom uh, fmcg banking 90% of all brands predominantly use music as a tool to enter into market with launch phases that's the time when you actually get all flavors uh, together whether whether it's an international uh, market whether it's india domestic market you would have different consumers for different languages while we still say that music doesn't have any language it specifically needs a particular language to enter into the hearts of the consumers so um, insight is very simple be specific it's like uh, think global go local and uh, you would always need that language to get the connectivity faster both ways digital or live you are uh, you are on mute you are on mute charju thank you thank you i said give me punjabi music or give me latino music i can do any day i mean it's in some form i would say there is a universal connect there but yes i will pick that point of view manpreet but i i so, agree with manpreet because uh, a classic example of tube of mild which is for a little upper acc target audience it was hip hop and edm and foreign stars we got and sunburn but right. when we are launching tube of strong we had to convince also the board out there in denmark about the need for regional music and that too it was different it was hindi mohichan in the north and then regional artists in calcutta and hyderabad and bangalore because music is universal but india is 29 countries within one country radio and media you know you have to be you have to be relevant also locally otherwise you know the english speaking audience who consume english genre music is very minuscule compared to the target audience uh, of of indian base so i agree with manpreet it's it's a good starting point to enter but depending on your brand and what 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 does it stand for where is your market you know which market or which state or where are you entering or which acc you are catering to uh, the strategy might change the the genre of music might change for sure mm-hmm. otherwise you will become irrelevant you know that's right yeah so i could just add a point to that charge a strong beer drinker uh, listening to edm and hip hop they will not understand you know they are so the right the final word from you like so just a couple of i think just to add on to both what manpreet and uh, and ramita said i think it's quite right it's also that music is a very versatile platform i've seen brands that use that december jan period in chennai when the karnatak sabhas are strong uh, you know do a lot of quality work and that attracts a very discerning Uh, you know uh, chennai audience right or in the sense i think what mahindra does with jazz and blues is a great example Absolutely. right you've got a very sharply defined audience that follow jazz and blues and when you do a festival you know you're attracting their audience so there's a lot of versatility besides the fact that music has different genres i think if you choose a right genre or a particular artist you can in a sense complement your brand message brilliantly because music gives you that versatility that few other platforms just want to add that bit perfect yeah And, and so, then, then if you identify, yeah, sorry, give me the example. If you give me a minute, I'll. In at a time when I was in Kodak Mahindra Bank, we were to launch gold as a product, and uh, we had to we had to really go down to the T to understand which music and uh, an actress would go well with all the five different states with five different languages. because each of the states has very very strict and cult following of each actor or actress and somebody who could do music as well so we finally you know came on to shobhna a bharatnatyam dancer and an actress 
was also known a little bit in uh, uh, Hindi film industry with Mitra, where she did well. So, you know, that much deep you have to go to see that there's a connectivity with consumers all across all the markets where you have to spread and you also have to look at the budget. Absolutely. That's the boss's word. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, so essentially, it's about zero in to a specific genre yeah. or, or an artist or or the language, but then the artist, language, the consumption, term. everything, and, and the budget. I think that's what we're wishing for, right? As content. That's creators. where Lloyd is giving me a nod. <laughs> okay. The budget finally okay. signs it off everything. <laughs> so, so, so on that note, I think uh, I'm not sure if we have time for any questions. Then, is it possible that I can take one question, or we are up to it? Okay, I'm sorry, Anisha. I'm sorry if I kind of interrupted your Q in, but uh, we'll take it offline, I guess. You know, I'm sure you can write in to Exchange for Media and Music Inc. Uh, but thank you so much. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Vishwa. Thank you, Ramita. Thank you, Muruga. And thank you, Manpreet. It was a pleasure. It was, I'm glad we could bring out some insights and thoughts into it. And going forward, it's, it's going to be a wonderful life ahead for all of us there. Stay healthy. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You and it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Happy thank you. World Music Day to all of you. Yeah, thank you so much. I thank you to our uh, moderator chair, Saju. Thank you so much yes, for moderating. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the speaker panel there, uh, Manpreet Ji, Ramita Ji, Vishwa Ji, Lloyd Ji, and of course, Murga Ji. And uh, Saju, there is an official anthem for your Rukka, by the way. <laughs> uh, that's been done with uh, Martin Garrix and uh, Bono along with uh, The Edge. And that's called as We Are The People. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I got that cue during it. And, and, and I'm hoping... I'm hoping some Indian uh, talent can also bring up our own little anthem as well as we consume further. <laughs> I will write for you. I will write you, Sajid. Just call me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. You have a lovely day. Wishing you a very happy World Music Day. Happy Yoga International Day. And wishing you Thank great. you so much. Thank you so much.